All right, guys, welcome to WZMB 91.3 FM. Interviewer Charlie interviewing uh, Gilby. Gilby. Gilby here with us, guys. So, you know, you make music, of course, and, you know, we're so honored to have you here, you know, you sharing your music with us. You know, to get into it, you know, what, what, what got you into music? What, you know, how did you start making music? Um, so originally it was to impress a girl I was into. Uh, <laughs> it's you know, always I, to impress a girl. It's <laughs> a lot always of times, to impress yeah. a girl. Whenever I was, uh, whenever I was younger, I, you know, like I learned a little bit from my brother-in-law, kind of put it down. I was more into sports and stuff. And then I, you know, got to college and I eventually got bored of playing Xbox. And so, uh, I picked up the guitar again, uh, going, it was kind of into the music scene and I was like, you know, I bet she would, I bet she would like it if I, <laughs> if I started doing this stuff. Um, and so I started writing and then I found out I really, really loved it. So I just kept doing it. Did you ever impress the girl you were trying to impress? I mean, <laughs> maybe I wasn't very good at that point in time, no. so I probably embarrassed myself more than anything. But you know, are you guys still in contact now? No, <laughs> <laughs> not really. I mean, maybe every once in a while we'll send like a meme on Instagram or something like yeah. that. That's, that's about it. Yeah. So regarding music, of course, you know, who were your musical influences? Who inspired you to get into music? Mm. I guess it's kind of hard to say. I have a lot of different influences. Um, like if we're looking at some of my favorite songwriters, uh, I love like Ben Gibbard and Connor Oberst. Uh, weirdly enough, John Prine. Um, what's his name? Matt Thielen, I think, mm -hmm. from uh, Reliant K. I loved a lot of like the pop punk stuff. So Blink, Green Day, all those bands. Ah, uh, Green Day, yeah. And then some like Midwest emo type stuff, you know. But that's those are a lot of the things that really like got me into wanting to play mm -hmm. and wanting to write and everything like that so and so you mentioned you write music right mm -hmm. so what is your song writing process like you know from day to day mm -hmm. when you're trying to write a song um you know a lot of times I don't really like try to write necessarily it's just one of those things where I, I'll pick up a guitar and I'll start playing a little bit um, I'll noodle around some and if I hear something I like I try to you know build around that um, whether that be you know just a melody to sing or if I want to do some different like little licks with it uh, but it's usually very organic I just play and then maybe something will come to mind and then I'll just try to go from there whether it be the first verse or the chorus first you know I guess it's kind of hard to say very organic though I, I watched your um, the the link you know one of our DJs here sent me you know with you when you were playing the song for us here yeah and in that in that video you know I I saw that you said that you know you have music coming up soon for us because I'm a fan too now. <laughs> you know what message do you want these people to take? You know when they listen to your music. I guess it's uh, a lot of the times I just write about what I'm feeling and what I'm going through. Uh, so if it's anything, it would be like you're not the only person going through it. If they relate, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Um, other than that, I'm just kind of venting. So yeah. like maybe they can vent as well, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, and, and, and is Goddess in the Sea or is the Sea Slug mm -hmm. one of the songs that I listen to? Very good song. Very, very good song. Is that going to be in your upcoming um, singles? I don't know yet, actually. Um, like I said, I put down some demos and stuff, uh, but I guess it just depends on whether I'm wanting to actually put together an EP or just release a single or whatever first. At some point, I'm sure. Um, but that one's. It might be a little bit before I release that one. And what was what was the backstory behind that song? That was a very good song. Thank you. Uh, that one, just kind of the theme of like unrequited love. Um, I mean, something that's been done a million times. Uh, but I wanted to kind of make it a story rather than just being like, oh, I really liked her. She didn't like me back. So um, I guess a lot of it was I was thinking about like the princess and the frog, and I was like, that's not realistic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Obviously, it's not realistic. But I wanted to kind of go with like that story type theme um, and so I wrote that one and I was like what's something that could be similar but instead of like them ending up together it's something where they're drifting further and further apart like well uh, you know like the goddess is up on the moon that's the whole big thing and that controls the tides and the sea slug is there so kind of like the actions of that other person really affect me while you know what I'm doing may have no bearing on them um, that was I guess that was kind of the idea behind it you know wanted to, wanted to make it a more creative piece. Mm -hmm. so. And I noticed you implemented elements of like English literature. You yeah. use like metaphors and ironies and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think one of those stuff I wrote down, like detailed words that stood out to me was like spineless and inverted. <laughs> you yeah. know, the end is spelled out. 
um, numb the pain. You know, uh, words that you use in this song, incredible song. You know, where did did they have any connection to any personal experiences in your life? Uh, kind of. Um, so the uh, the spineless invertebrate part. It was just the whole like I've always had, I guess, trouble expressing like my feelings and everything. Like it's it's been one of those things. That's why music is so great because I feel like I can express it and I don't have to feel anything about it. You know. Um, and so that's kind of one of the things. Because after that, it's like you know what would I even say, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> um, the other one, what was, what were the other ones on that? Um, so, you know, I put down spineless and inverted, oh, the, the end is spelled out. Yeah, so that one, it, it started off as like uh, some sort of play on the whole cliche of a picture's worth a thousand words. Um, and so it was like, you know, I get the picture, I don't want empty words, the ending's all been spelled out. You love me? That's absurd. So yeah, it was just kind of a kind of a play on that. Wanted to make sure the the words work together in that in that sense. Um, and then the other one was kind of the uh, about like a another like the other person moving on, and then you not quite. So uh, I am by my murky waters, try to numb the pain. Blah blah blah. You're up dancing on the moon. The whole uh, they're kind of moving on and, and doing bigger and better things. Well, you just kind of want to sit there and maybe maybe have a few too many cocktails, and then you know, um, one of those you're you're letting your mind, you know, just go over and over the same thing rather than moving on while the other person is. Do you think you're gonna follow the same structure with your future songs, in implementing like metaphors and? I always try to add something like that in there. Um, when I first started writing, I was a little too literal with everything. Um, but the more I wrote, the more I felt like I was just saying the same thing over and over. And so I wanted to kind of move away from that and find new ways to say things where maybe I felt it a little bit more than me just putting it out there and saying it, you know, how I normally would, I guess. And also, you know, I feel like your first song is never good. You know, it's always that, you know, it's very basic. Yeah. Would you agree? That's, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I felt whenever I first started writing. I, I, it took me probably a year of writing to actually like anything. Um, you know, I like it in the moment, and then I would like play it again, and then by the next week I hated it. Sometimes it's still the same. You know, there are songs that I play now that uh, people like. Like I'll play them at different shows and things, and people like ask for those particular songs, and I feel like I don't have that same connection to them anymore. And it just it's it's weird. I don't like them as much as I used to. Um, I mean, I still play them. They're fun, but like, yeah, it's 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 hard. You have a connection to your music, but at the same time, it's something that you made, so you have a very like this feeling about it that you, you want it to be perfect and you know it's generally not but do you, do you look back on that and be like wow like how much progress you've made I do sometimes yeah, yeah. Uh, actually the other day like I was just playing around and I was playing some of my old songs and uh, like looking through old voice memos and notes and stuff like that and I found one of like the early songs I wrote and I remember playing it and I was like wow that would I would I would have just <laughs> like scrapped that immediately if I started writing it now but yeah. so you know, what advice can you give to aspiring artists who are also trying to get into music? Uh, I guess being an aspiring artist myself, um, don't try too hard to say what everyone else wants to hear, I guess. Don't, um, don't try to write what you think people would like, you know, because people can generally tell if something's not authentic. Um, People are kind of dumb, but a lot of times they can see through that. So write what you feel. If people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. You know, I think uh, the best way to do it, though, is be truthful and authentic in what you write. And I think that falls into, you know, you trying to be original. Mm-hmm. And, you know, regarding the music industry and regarding mainstream music, you know, what are your thoughts on that right now? Do you, what do you think you see the music industry going into in the future? I mean, I think there's definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of it is relatability now um but i mean that being said people find relatability through a lot of individual experiences um i don't know especially with like tiktok and everything coming out the songs that are garnering a lot of attention and everything now um are the ones where people you know there's that first line that really captures you and they're like oh i want to hear where that goes from here you know um and then after that it's whether it continues to be something that you can relate to uh while still having that kind of poppy catchy melody to it Mm. Um, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think uh, 
I, I enjoy pop music, you know what I mean? I, a lot of times I think it's overproduced, but I think music should be enjoyed regardless of the, of the genre or whatever else. There are always elements that you can find that you would enjoy or you know, whatever else. So. so Goddess in the Sea Slug, <laughs> will that be coming out soon? Uh, maybe, maybe a few months yeah. um, on that one. I'm hoping to put something out by June. Um, and whether that'll be on there or not, I don't know. It's a surprise to me still, yeah. too. So. Well, it'll be out very, very soon. <laughs> so you guys make sure to, you know, listen to it, play it, you know, anywhere. And it's such an honor to have such a great artist here, you know. Thanks, man. Such a, and we hope to have you here very, very soon again. Maybe you can play us that song live when yeah. it comes out. Absolutely, man. That'd be but uh, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. You're at WZMB 91.3. WZMB. WZMB, yeah. <laughs> well, you have a good one. Absolutely, right back yeah. at you.